Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome back to a brand new video. And today we're going to be recreating Mourinho's 352 that he used at Tottenham and is currently using at Roma. It's going to be a good video, but before we get into it, guys, please do leave the video a like. Be sure to comment below any future videos you do want to see, whether that's tactics or rebuilds. And last but definitely not least, do hit subscribe on the channel and turn on notifications. But let's get into the video. So for the first time on this channel, we are going to spend a little segment of the video actually going over the philosophy, the tactics, because I feel like it's going to give you a lot more of an explanation to when we break down our version of the tactic. Obviously, Mourinho is known for playing more of the defensive side of the game. He's known for defending more than he is attacking. And obviously, he's not really a ticky-tacker manager either. Um, one thing that you probably will be surprised by, as it does say somewhere down here because i've been researching this a lot um when we go into it he actually does play with quite a high press when it comes to defending it's sort of like once the ball gets through that midfield area he will the defenders just charge out and it is about risk taking and it is he does pick up a lot of fouls doing it but it is very very good to do because obviously it works it's a good result also if this text does look a bit funny on here that's not my recording this website has got a very weird looking text i will say that um but if you guys do want to look at this it is totalfootballanalysis.com it's a real good way to sort of discover systems and tactics and stuff like that um but no a lot of people don't understand that Mourinho does actually play with a high press which he does um more towards the back than the front i would say and obviously one this is a 352 you could also call it obviously you know you could call it a 532 it looks very similar to both obviously the fullbacks are sort of very pushed up they're probably automatic i would say um so you can look at it from two different perspectives but it is known as a 352 that is one thing i'll say but if we have a little look here then um so we can see here that the wing backs are tasked with pressing their opposite numbers in the high block phase so basically Mourinho's fullbacks are very important to him because they they will press up but also they're expected to get back and defend at the same time. So it is, they've got a lot going on. It's a very tough system to play in. Obviously, a lot of Mourinho's fullbacks aren't known for getting like Trent Alexander-Arnold assists and stuff like that because they've got a big part of defensive game. They don't really have that freedom as well. So it's a lot harder for them and it is quite difficult to be honest. But you can see here by the pictures, I thought I'd include these because it does show like a visual image as well, which is always very, very good. Um... And the thing about what I was literally about to say, Mourinho's centre-backs are really important because what will happen is, and you'll see it later on, the reason why he has three at the back is because when he has the ball, um, especially at the back, one of the centre-backs will push up into sort of a midfield area. So it then goes to a four at the back. So having that extra player at the back is a very good flex because then when you're defending, you've got obviously your three centre-backs, two full-backs, and then when you push up a little bit, one of them centre-backs pushes up into midfield, um, which is very, very useful. Um, but no, it's actually the last line of defence for Mourinho, hence why he has three options there at the end of the day. It's if they get through that midfield, there's always one there to sort of bail him out. Another big thing, as you'll see in this tactic, man-marking is a big thing with Mourinho. Obviously, you've seen it a lot. Um a lot a lot with his teams um a lot of man marking goes on and it's just because you know it makes it very hard to you know get through the defense at the end of the day if you've got players that are man marking players every single time it's very difficult to get the ball into their feet very difficult to get the ball moving and it's a big thing that Mourinho has done for a very very long time and it does work at the end of the day this is a manager that has won a lot in his career and definitely a manager which gets underlooked I feel compared to like Guardiola Klopp etc etc as it does say here as well, because they do play with quite a high press and style, it can cause their midfielders to be dragged into the deeper areas of the pitch. And that pretty much means that one of these centre-backs, which is going to be the left centre-back, obviously for us it's going to be very similar. Um, you want one centre-back to be able to push out, take more risks and sort of try and high press and win the ball back. And that is why it's always good. Because if you look at this picture even here, this is the left centre-back, but they've still got these three here, and also there's a player here as well. So, I mean, there's always someone to cover, which is why having five at the back, or three at the back, five, whatever you want to say, works really well. It genuinely does. So, we're going to have a little look then, a little bit of their midfield shape. Now, this is a good picture here, because we're going to see it when they're defending the ball, not when they're attacking. So, here, they have got the five at the back. They've got the three in midfield, one slightly deeper, and then you've got your two here, who 
drop back quite deep as well to try and win the ball back, um, which is very good. Obviously, you need the right players because you wouldn't be able to... There's a lot of strikers that are too selfish to do that, so you do need to have the right sort of players to do this. But um, it's a really good defensive shape at the end of the day. There's not many options on the ball. Like, obviously, if they go wide with it here, they're just going to shift over. Same with that side. And as for this, they're very close to the people, and it's quite a good line as well. Um, so it is a very good shape to have. That is for sure. We're going to go a little bit on to the attack right now. Um, so build up an attack and play. Obviously, he's not known for playing out from the back. He doesn't really, you know, play that sort of way at all, does he? He's more of a direct manager, as it does go on to say here. Um, but he does allow his centre-backs to play long balls. So in this system, I have actually got a target forward. Not purely just to whip the ball in 24-7, but a player that you can knock the ball up to because it is something that he does do in his own tactics. And it's pretty simple. Um, to be honest, guys, when it when it comes to attack, and you can see a ball getting played over the top here, and look, this is what it's trying to show that the players sort of run towards him. So when he does win that knockdown, if he wins the knockdown, or even if the centre back wins it and it goes into this area here, players are instantly on it. And you know, it's it's a very clever way of playing football. I will say that it's very frustrating for other teams, I imagine. And when he was at United. I loved him. I really loved him being a manager. He wasn't the most entertaining. Obviously, it never is that type of game style, but it gets results, and at the time, that's all that we needed. But let me know what you guys think of this part of the video. Do you guys like this part of the video? Would you rather not be in there? Obviously, this is the first time I've really gone into it, and I've not gone into it in loads of depth. I'm just going over the basics, just because I feel like it makes the tactic at the end make a little bit more sense to why I put certain players in certain areas. But do let me know, and I'll read the feedback and move on with it. But let's get into the actual first save, which is going to be with Roma. The first save we've done is going to be with Roma, obviously the club that he's managing right now, and doing quite a good job managing as well. Obviously, he won the Conference League, something we didn't manage to do. We actually lost to Tottenham, obviously, with the team, which is going to be our other save. But we did manage to win the Serie A, which is a great accomplishment, especially in the first season. No sign-ins were made either. They never are in these videos. And the Coppa Italia as well, we managed to win that. So we managed to win the double in what, you know, it's quite a big challenge to win the Serie A in the first season. Obviously, you've got Inter Milan that were on our tail. They're only six points behind. Tammy Abraham with outstanding stats and he's the target forward with 40 goals 7.63 on the highest match rating 17 assists for Zanilio as well and overall a very very good season with Roma I mean second best at scoring one thing that you should always be at is probably the best at conceding goals we've only conceded 25 obviously Mourinho is very defensively solid that is what he is as a manager that's what you think of when you think of Mourinho if we go into the squad we'll look at some of the stats so let's have a little look then so here we go then. We've got Tammy Abraham contributing with 40 goals, which is honestly ridiculous. He has also managed to get 13 assists. You've got Zanilo here, who looks like a very hot prospect indeed. He looks very good there. Very good player. Um, 17 assists, 21 goals. We then got Cliver with four goals, 16 assists. Um, four assists, sorry, 16 goals. You got Vertut there, obviously midfield player with 13 assists. 10 goals. Um, you've got Pellegrini with 12 assists and 9 goals and so on. A couple of good assists down here in Spinozola and Karlsrup, who are our fullbacks. So your fullbacks will be getting assists, but the reason why I mentioned it earlier is you're not going to be getting as many assists as like what you would, for example, in that Klopp tactic I uploaded where Trent got like 30 or something. Because Mourinho, although the fullbacks are important, they're not given the license to roam all the time, all the way up. So you won't get as much from them. But nevertheless, I mean, we've got two forwards there who have scored 40 goals and 21 goals. And we ranked, what was it? Second best for scoring goals in the Serie A, a division where most teams are quite defensively solid anyway. So it's quite a good result. We'll have a little look in the data hub, just at the basics. Um, so team attacking. Um, we're actually goals per game is bang on two, which I've never seen before. Bang on two. So that's very good. Expected a 1.88. Um, pass completion at 84, which isn't, as I said, a lot of long balls do get played in the system. So don't expect to be seeing flawless tiki taka because you won't. That's not what sort of tactic it is at all by any means of the imagination. Um, defending, very good. Bang on what I wanted. We're talking under a goal a game. So we're, you know, we conceded less than a goal a game, scored two a game roughly. 
I mean, that just, it's a recipe for success at the end of the day. Very good stats there. Decent tackle win ratio as well. Like I said, a lot of players are on get stuck in. So you are going to pick up bookings. Obviously, that is something which you do see in Mourinho's game plan a lot. Game style. You've seen it anywhere he goes. Teams will take bookings. That's just the way he manages. And to be honest, I'm not against it. I think in this game, you have to sort of take thousands. You know, you get punished for not, you get punished for being nice guys. Obviously, you've seen that Tottenham documentary on Amazon where he was basically tell, saying to the Tottenham players, you're too nice. You need to be more aggressive. That is what he means. But um, no, overall, a very, very good season with Roma. Very, I really enjoyed playing it, to be fair. Obviously, I did simulate a few. I must admit, I did play the final, so I wanted to watch it. Um, but that is going to be the Roma one done. And we're going to hop over to the Tottenham one. And we are also going to have a little breakdown of the 2D analysis. Before we do get into the Tottenham one, though, guys, if you are enjoying this video so far, please do give it a like. Be sure to comment below as well of what you enjoy about the video. And please do subscribe as well and turn on notifications. As always, this tactic is going to be available to you in the comment section, in the description, not the comment section. Just simply click the media fire and upload the tactic by going onto the tactics load. I'll show you how to do that later. But let's get in to the Tottenham safe. So then we then go over to Tottenham and we had a very, very good season with Tottenham. We managed to win the Premier League literally by a point, which obviously was very challenging because we didn't, you know, there's a lot of teams that have strengthened massively. Tottenham have strengthened, but obviously City had Haaland, Liverpool had Nunes, and we still managed to do it. We were the third best at scoring. So, you know, drop down the rankings there, but obviously there's a lot of better teams in the Premier League that are scoring a lot of goals. We were the best at conceding, only letting in 19 goals the entire year, which is a very good stat to have. We also won the Europa Conference League against Roma. So that's the same final twice, which is quite weird. And the Carabao Cup against Man United. Unfortunately, we do lose the FA Cup against rivals Arsenal. But overall, a treble in the first season. I don't think many Arsenal, many Arsenal, many Tottenham fans will complain about that at all. A very good season from Harry Kane, as expected. We're going to break down some of the stats now. Um, we'll go into a bit of detail. Honestly, incredible from Chung Min Son and Harry Kane. Going to be the two strikers there, contributing loads. Um, you also got 12 goals from... Oh, he's on loan. You've got Sanchez with 10. You've got Richarlison coming in with 10. Obviously, their new signing. I, I have got him because I'm playing on the up-to-date database. Definitely recommend you guys get that from Source Out SI. Ben Secure with 21 assists. Very impressive for a midfielder. You've got 19 for Son. You've got 11 for Kane, 11 for Hoiberg, 9, 9, 6, and 4. Highest match rating going to Hume Son, pulling out a 7.5, which is honestly ridiculous. He did play 62 games, so one hell of a season in there. That is for, is for sure. But I mean, overall... I'm really happy with how this went. I wasn't expecting to win the league with these. I was partly expecting to win it with Roma because although there's a lot of competition, I know they've got a good team. But with this save, I was expecting to probably finish around third, possibly second. But we just about edged it against Man City. And what, I mean, the title race was ridiculous, wasn't it? There's literally a point between three teams there, which is ridiculous. And obviously, Arsenal did fall off a little bit. Man United, again, equal points to Arsenal, but do miss out there. Um, actually, equal again on goal difference as well. So that's very interesting to see. If we go into the data, we'll have a little look. Team attacking, goals per game, not sitting at two, 1.89, a little less. But again, as I will say, there are slightly tougher teams in this division, as I did say earlier. Um, pass completion sitting at 83, which isn't too bad. As I said, there's, it's not really ticky-tacker, this system. It's pretty much get the ball, long ball, make the runs, cause a bit of upset, and try and win the flick-ons. Team defending, this is very impressive here, sitting at 0.5 goals a game, which is obviously under half a goal a game, if you want to use it, if you want to word it like that. And again, we've got the expected goals is sitting still at under, under one. So, I mean, overall, a very defensively solid tactic, which is obviously what you want from a Mourinho-based tactic. You don't want a tactic that is great at scoring goals but concede six because that's not how Mourinho plays a lot of Mourinho's games he might only win by one goal two goals tops but his defensive display is really impressive and we're now going to go into some 2D gameplay watch a little bit of it because obviously we did do the, the analysis bit at the start we're going to watch a little bit of 2D gameplay and hopefully sort of get some of those images that we saw at the start in the actual game so I've picked a game a dominant game a 6-0 win against Aston Villa but even in this game we didn't have as much of the ball as Aston Villa. Showing that, you know, it's not about possession, this tactic, at all. You very well might dominate a team and still not have majority of the ball. And that's completely fine. But here we go. Then. So a ball gets played long, which you will see a lot from your goalkeeper. And here, right. So here, Watkins does get a chance through. But if we, re if we do rewind that, that does come down to just a very good ball, I believe. But there was three players in here who should have got a bit closer because they are told to obviously man up. But they've let him go. 
And to be fair, number four does actually recover and comes across. But that's a bit of how like they will charge down. That little bit of pressing that's in there will be, you will see it a lot when it comes to defense. Again, another long goal kick. Kane wins to flick on. Santa Kulaveski. And hopefully, there we go. I don't know why I said earlier, by the way, Kulaveski's on loan, so I won't read it out. He's obviously on loan at this club. I don't know why I said that. Um, but you can see that all from the long goal kick and how the play works out. So that's one thing I really want to show you guys. And luckily, we've been able to see it in this game because the flick-ons worked really well in this system, guys. They really did. We then got Matty Cash. And as you can see, the pressing coming in from number five. But again here, man marking coming in. That is actually going to be from Perisic there. But Dyer, you know, is in there like a shot. And... There's no space for players in the system on the other team. There's no space. Again, a long ball over the top. Number 17, I don't know what happened there. Song goes past him. It's an open goal and it's a goal. And that's what I mean. Not a lot of people play the long ball system. But in Mourinho's tactics, there is a big part of that. And stuff like that can happen, guys. Defenders can make an issue. That's number 17. Who was that? Diego Carlos, obviously a defender that has got a lot of errors in him. And um, we execute it and get a result. Then got Ben Secure on the right. Royale with a ball in. Kung Min Son, a great save from, um, I believe, Martinez, and Kane gets the rebound in. This, this tactic, like I say, guys, it's not going to be elegant football. It's about getting results. This is the perfect tactic if you do enjoy playing that way. You're not fussed about doing these short, sweet passes and elegant football. You will get results, but it might not be pretty results. Another chance here, Emerson Royale, ball in, Son. Oh, he's actually going to give a penalty then, but no, it's a goal kick. So we've got a Villa goal kick here. Royale with a throw in into Son. Takes his time with it, plays it all the way back. Again, long pass is fine. There's always options on here, guys. And this is I mean, this perfect. Perisic, obviously, would be playing on the left-back spot. He is pushed up all the way here. And that's not an issue, because obviously we've still got three at the back. And that's what I mean. When people say it's a 5-3-2, it does look like that sometimes. But it is definitely more a 3-5-2, because these fullbacks can play as wingers at the end of the day. Romero, again, with the ball here, plays it to Emerson Real, who is pushed up very high. Benteke into Romero, into Royale, ball in the box, into Kulaveski, who just puts it wide. But again, we're getting the chances from using the whip, and that is the key thing with this. Mings with the ball here. We've got number 30 trying to shut him down, which is going to be Benteke. 12 right on him like a hot rash, Emerson Royale. Tackle, tackle. And look, at we're getting so close to these players, and that's exactly what you want to do, because it forces them to make him passes. And it's a mistake from Mings. Benteke with the ball again there, plays it wide to Son. Takes his time, but Kulaveski again. You will. I just want to quickly say and elaborate there. You will do short passes. You're not going to always hit it long, but when you do see the option to hit it long, you will. As we've done here with Harry Kane, who runs with it, runs with it, puts it wide. But that was quite an ambitious shot outside the box, and quite unlucky to be fair. Kulaveski with the ball here, ball across all the way, cleared from Douglas Louise, number four on him again, and this is where we can sort of see a bit of the shape. So. If he plays it wide, the only player he can go to is going to be Leon Bailey here, which he does find. But numbers, look at this. We've got number five drifting across in Hoiberg. Perisic is now going to be tracking back. We're going to have Benteke tracking back as well. And by the time that um, Bailey does get it to the wing, we have got one, two, three, four players that probably will end up in the box if he was to get it in. But Perisic does win the ball back. And now we can counter attack with Hoiberg into Perisic. Kane holds up the ball into Son. Is he going to wait for Kane again? He does. And just like that, beautiful. So again, not a long ball used there, but it is good link-up play. And that's having two up top is really effective, not only in real life, but especially in Football Manager this year. A lot of people like playing narrow systems. This isn't really narrow, but um, the two up top is very good in this game as well. Kulaveski with the ball there into Hoiberg. Again, short passing, but maybe we'll see a long ball in a second with Dyer into Sanchez. There goes the long ball, knock it up to Son. Who I think he, if he didn't win the header, the other player did win the header. That is what in that image there where the midfielders make sure they're in space. So whoever does win the header, they can pick up the ball as Hoiberg has done here. With the ball into Perisic, he plays it back into Hoiberg. Kulaveski with the ball into Hoiberg again. Dyer, what's he going to do with it? Into Sanchez, back into Dyer, into Hoiberg. And this is, this is you know, there was only one long pass used there. And it didn't result in a goal. But if you notice that spell of play there, a lot of it was short passing until we had the option for one long pass, which does get played. And unfortunately, we couldn't finish the goal. But Douglas Louise here into Matty Cash. Very weird. Just skipped the highlight. OK, um, we intercept that there brilliantly from Kulaveski. Long ball over the top into Harry Kane, who should finish. And he does. And that is what is so deadly about this. Sometimes when you play a tactic that is purely short passing, that goal wouldn't have happened because the ball wouldn't have gone over the top. But there was lots of space. Kane got in behind. Kulaveski read it well, played the ball over. 
And because of that, we were able to get a goal. And that puts us 5-0 up. They get a set piece here, which they do actually win, but do not manage to convert it, which is a bit of a shame. Wouldn't have meant a lot, though. They were 5-0 down at the time. And is this going to be the last goal from Basuma? I believe it is. Basuma gets his goal. But I'll show you the stats. Um, I'm going to show you the stats because it was it was complete domination. But what I was going to show you is that we, we did actually manage to dominate that game in every aspect apart from possession. When they, they we, I think we had 43%, so obviously they would have 57 And again, it doesn't matter because they, we, they didn't even score. They didn't have too many chances, so you don't need the ball always in football. But let's go in to the actual tactic and start breaking this down. So then, this is what it's going to look like, guys. It is, as I said, it will look a bit like a 5-3-2, but it is a 3-5-2. Um, it will look very similar. Obviously, a 5-3-2 would probably have them push back a little bit more, but you've obviously got your three here, you then got your five, which is pretty much looking like a triangle right here. But let's actually break down this then. So we're going to start off tactical style. It's a custom direct counter attack. Obviously, if you guys want to have the easy way, I promised I'd show you. Download it in the description. Click on this little box here. Go load and then locate it in your downloads. It will translate everything over for you guys. It will save a lot of time. Mentality is positive in possession. We've got attack and width set to fairly wide. Will be overlap on the right and the left hand side. We've got slightly more direct on the pass. If you go, if you go too high, it gets ridiculous. You want it on this one because I found this is the perfect way. Balls do get played over the top a lot, but they don't get they don't get forced. If that makes sense. Higher tempo, you don't need the highest one for this at all, and play for set pieces because when you got three centre halves, if you tell them to get into the box, obviously from set pieces you're quite you're you're very strong from set pieces, so there's no harm playing for set pieces at all and obviously it's even better if you've got a good free kick taker because if it's on the edge you've got a chance of scoring directly from it and also if you've got if it's from like the um sort of the corner for the corner side the left or right side if you've got a player that can deliver all the better you know in transition then we've got counter press selected and counter obviously there is a little bit of pressing in this tactic as i did say and when the ball has been won you are you are looking to counter attack that is Mourinho in a nutshell as i said a, a center back could win the ball back and then that, as we saw with Dyer, he can pluck balls over the top. Obviously, if you've got a better centre back than Dyer, you're going to see an even better result. But um, even Dyer made a good job of it, to be fair to him. And nothing selected here. We're not distributing it short. We're taking long kicks because, as you saw again from that 2D gameplay, when the ball gets played long from the goalkeeper, players can win the flick-ons, and it's a great way to get goals in this system. Out of possession, we have got force opposition outside, lower defensive line and a standard line of engagement. Trigger press on much more often, as I did say, and I keep saying, so I do apologise about that. There is pressing in this tactic, something which a lot of people don't assume Mourinho actually does play with, but he does quite a lot. And we have got get stuck in, so you are going to pick up the occasional booking in this system, but it's the way that he plays. So, I mean, if you guys want to go against it, you can turn it off, but it's the tactical fouls are something which I... When I think of tactical fouls, he's the guy which I think of. He sort of invented it. This is the guy that took out a player in a charity match on the sideline. Leave a like on the video if you remember that. Because that, that was uh, that was funny, that. But let's actually go in then to, which is probably the main part of the video, is going to be the player roles. So, we've got a sweeper keeper. Um, nothing instruct no special instructions really he's on defend um the directness of the pass is going to be on standard it doesn't need to go any longer than that standard is completely fine and obviously the reason why he's not on short is because we do knock up the field quite a lot with this system now this we've got a mixture of center backs here and there is a lot of reason for this so the one on the left hand side is a ball play and defender with the license to dribble more and the reason why he is that is because as we saw in the pitches when we have the ball they sort of do go to a four at the back. That defender sort of, you know, if I'll show you vis visibly. So this is where the defensive line would be. This defender sort of probably sits at about here and sort of develops that into more of a, you know, a basic four at the back tactic. But this is what you want to have for him. You want to have him on balance, mark tight. And obviously there's a lot of marking going on in this system. It's what he relies on. Tackle harder, dribble more, standard with the pass because obviously no short passing. That he goes along quite a lot, especially with his centre backs. In the middle, we've got a no-nonsense centre-back. We need someone that is going to come and literally just annihilate, come out and just cause some press on him. We have got Mark Tighter, Tackle Harder, and more direct passing selected for him. On the right-hand side, we've got a basic central defender on defend duty as well. Mark Tighter, Tackle Harder, standard with the um, passing directness again. Um, 
And just because these are all on long, as we, as we saw in that 2D gameplay, guys, you won't always hit the ball long if there's not a pass on, but it is a good way to play. We then go on to the wing back, which is going to be on the automatic roll. And this is where things, there's a lot of instructions, so be sure to pay attention unless you've already downloaded the tactic. We've got balanced, we've got mark tighter, get further forward, because if you don't have that selected, I do find it being a little bit stale. So have that on, run wide with the ball selected as well. And also on this, you want, you know, standard pass and directness and the center to aim the crosses at. It's a very good way to play and a, it's just a really successful way. And then on this left-hand side, you want selected exactly the same, balanced, mark tighter, get further forward, run wide with the ball, standard and aim at the center. Moving on then to the free in midfield, which is sort of the, the triangle, if you don't class this as a triangle. The ball winner midfielder on defensive duty. We've got him on, stat, it's pretty much standard. This guy is just there to pretty much defend, not get forward at all, pluck out the occasional long ball and sort of just cover for when obviously one of these players does push up and he's done a very good job. The player next to him is very basic. I'm um, central midfielder on support, does a little bit of both then. We've got him on the trigger press. We haven't got him on mark tighter because we've got him on move into channels on this player. Tackle harder selected. Um, standard pass and dribble more because he's not the most attacker midfield player. But we don't want him to also just be not getting forward at all. Because otherwise you won't create any chances at all with this system. We then go on to the attacking, um, or, yeah, sorry, attacking midfielder. And he is on support because that way he will come back and defend as well as we did see in that 2D highlights as well. He is on tackle harder. Standard on the... um pass and directness dribble more because he's our most advanced midfielder and take more risks again because he's our most advanced midfielder again so he is by far definitely the most attacker midfielder we've got but he will also do the dirty work get back win the ball back and fill in when you know when it's needed and then the last two players are both on attack um although when we actually watch that 2d gameplay they did find themselves tracking back so that is probably purely based from the tactical style and the instructions we've got a target forward which obviously is great for them long goal kicks um, we have got him and hold up the ball but don't let that put you off because abraham was in this position and he got like 40 goals so it doesn't mean he's not going to contribute with the goals at all feel free to swap him around if you don't like that but trust me this guy will still get bags of goals and standard on the pass and directness and then this guy's going to be your more smaller striker your more nippy striker we've got an advanced forward balanced trigger press directness of the passing is going to be on standard and shoot more often because he's by far the most selfish player in the team by a long shot but no that is going to be it's a great it is a great tactic guys again it's not elegant football it's not beautiful football but it will get you results as you see as you've seen here with Tottenham you know finishing with a treble in the first season no signings of our own made and we could have done we had 53 million but I never liked to influence the save at all other than obviously who they signed from the database but no that is going to be pretty much it for that whole tactic breakdown but if you have enjoyed the video guys please do leave the video a like be sure to comment below what you think of this tactic whether you think you're going to use it as well and please do subscribe to the channel guys there's tons of content coming out pretty much on a daily basis now there is also a new series coming i'm not going to leak what it is just yet but it is definitely worth the wait but that is going to be it for today guys and i'll see you in the next one